Hey guys, and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows, and today we're looking at Trade on the Tigress from Tasty Minstrel Games. Trade on the Tigress is a set collection engine building trading game for three to six players. In the game, players are trying to trade goods to gain money to become the wealthiest civilization on the Tigress. It's designed by Jeff Eggelstein and Richard Sturm. TMG provided us with a copy, so let's take a look at it now. To set up the game, place the government and religion tracks out on the table and place their corresponding deck in the zero slot in the center with their six decks each in ascending order from the center. Each player then receives a player mat and their starting resources. The special trade deck, imported goods deck, and basic goods deck are placed nearby and then you're ready to begin. Each round begins with players drawing two religion and two government cards from the piles based on their location of their meeple on the track. One of each type is chosen and any immediate abilities are resolved. During the production phase, players gain good cards according to their development cards and starting workers. Then, the floor opens, and players can begin trading their goods and tokens amongst each other. Once everyone is satisfied with their collection, up to three cards may be stored in their warehouse, and the mercantile phase begins. Any cards in their hands are scored, and coins are awarded. The bottom of their goods cards are also resolved, either moving their markers in one direction on the track or by gaining different tokens and coins. The civic phase happens next, and then the barbarians attack the player with the most tokens. They must sacrifice coins equal to the number of tokens, and then discard barbarians down to two. Then the player with the most culture tokens gets to enter a golden age. They also discard down to two tokens, but get to draw two and keep one card from the stack of their choice for that round. Once five rounds are played, the player with the most money gained while building their civilization wins. Trade on the Tigress is set in this really great Mesopotamian, brightly colored world. There's a lot of really cool art to look at on all the cards that you're trading. Uh, I really felt when I played this game, I'm not sure why, but I had that same feeling that I had when I first played uh, like Seven Wonders. You've kind of got this tableau in front of you. You're building up all this stuff around it. The mechanics aren't really the same, but that same feeling kind of comes from this type of game. I really had fun just kind of experiencing it and getting to interact with all the other players that were in the game and building up my set of resources and things. Uh, I enjoyed that in this game during the trading phase, you aren't just trading the goods cards that you've gained that round. Uh, you can trade any of the tokens that you have. Uh, there are special trading cards that have pretty powerful um, resources on them. And sometimes you aren't allowed to use those yourself when you gain them from a development card. Only somebody who has traded it off can use it. Uh, so those are pretty powerful in negotiating trades with other players. I think this game probably, like most trading games, it excels when you've got a little bit of a higher player count. Being able to trade with more people is going to kind of give you at least a higher score at the end. I don't know that the experience is totally different, but being able to really turn in a set of, you know, six really high valued cards and cashing those in is is a lot of fun in the game trying to figure out like do I do I save these three for next round hoping to get the fourth one that I'm needing or do I just cash it in and take the tokens there's a lot of really fun decision making that gets to happen on each of your turns yeah and there are a couple different modes of play that you can uh, choose before you begin um, the bottom of the goods cards have um, some benefits and for some players it may be um, a problem for trying to move along those tracks the further you get from the middle the better cards you're going to receive so if you keep going back and forth between the two and staying in the neutral area, you're not going to get good cards. Um, so you can choose ahead of time as a group if you're willing to lie about what's at the bottom of those cards, or you can just not talk about them and then hope that you get some good cards and maybe you'll end up trading them away uh, later on that round if you get something that's undesirable. Yeah, it is interesting to be able to say, like, I've got four fish in my hand. I'd like to cash them in for points, but this one is going to hurt me out on the other board. Maybe I just want to trade that away real quick and I'll just cash in for three. Lots of those types of decisions. We really had a good time with it. Uh, it's a good like medium weight takes about an hour 90 minutes I think you could play faster depending on how fast people are, are on their trades and making final decisions uh, but we had a lot of fun with it if it sounds like something you would enjoy check it out from TMG or your friendly local game store and then be sure to subscribe to Tantrum House we'll see you guys next time today we're looking at trade of the 
<laughs> We're not trading We're rivers. Trading the tigers. <laughs> Mediterranean era. Is that Mediterranean? No, I don't even know. Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. Trading on the tigers is set in this really great Mesopotamian era with the lots of the lots of. Any cards in their hands are stored and any hands in their... Gosh. <laughs> I hesitated. <laughs> I like, Can't say the right, words. What's going on? All right. 